Hey, everybody. So probably the part of AI that I talk about the least as a general rule on my channel overall is AI agents. And the reason for that is it's quite simple, right? To me, it's that the current frameworks that currently exist and that have existed for the last two, three years don't work. And there's no major innovation around that overall and hasn't been any major innovation within that. Like, so to me, overall, my flat out opinion is, is that everything that we are tr currently trying to do with regards towards uh, agents overall isn't working and, and won't, there's nothing that can change that <laughs> overall at this point because, uh, it's the same things now for like two plus years. And then that includes a a everything in the kitchen sink, right? Like the biggest thing has been like, okay, let's just like simplify the tasks and simplify the tasks. And then if we make it just like simpler and simpler and simpler, then we'll solve that problem. But to me, every one of these methods has the same core problem, which is that they all go about it the exact same way, right? Which is that I take models and I'll take multiple models. And then in this instance, I could take like, you know, Gemini 1.5 flash. I like these models because they're free and I'm screwed for duck. And then so within that, like, let's say the typical approach would be, I take a uh, Gemini 1.5 flash and I take like, let's say two or three of these models. And then one of them is like a planner. One of them is like a simulator. One of them is like a coder. Uh, and then like, I have them do different jobs, right? And I'll do like two fine tunings on them and I'll give them like two different types of data sets and then I'll fine tune them like all of this fine tuning and then the outcome is is that it works like 60% of the time <laughs> like that's just the flat out bottom line of it right um, and then so within that all of them are taking that same exact approach right which is that like fine tuning the data sets and then going through that way but it's just like let's make it again simpler and simpler so uh, that doesn't work so let's assume that that doesn't work it hasn't worked for two years two three years it's not going to work so what exactly is my method here? Why exactly is it different? And why should you care about it overall? Bottom line is, is that what's different than, than uh, the typical method within this is, is that tool world uh, is actually, it creates a, a latent space for uh, of tools, like of a toolbox, uh, for the LM model. And that's exactly how it operates, right? So within this particular latent space here, you see that the model has different tools, right? So text summarizer, web search, weather reporter, calendar creator. Uh, and then the model essentially, it, it has uh, created um, and placed these within different parts of its latent space. And then when we call and we want it to do these different functions and invoke these different tools, it essentially, uh, goes through uh and uh <laughs> if, if like uh let me see it's running on radio so we have to run with that um uh, but so let's see here there we go uh and then so it goes through and so you can see here it plots and then it, in the latent space right it's plotting the different tools so you have the different tools like the calendar creator the weather reporter and the text summarizer uh and then so and then it, this intent right and then so it, it's it's placing it here on the latent space close to text summarizer because we have it summarizing text <laughs> but uh it can see you can see here that it, it, the similarity score in this instance is 0.227 uh with regards uh, towards text summarization and then so you see here I have it very short and then it has compression level is high. Uh, if this works right, if it, like the gradio will mess up, so it might not work the second time. There we go. Compression level medium, right? And then all I did was remove the very short. Uh, and then if I just do this, create a summary. Com like like uh, no compression level, right? Like, so it's just, uh, but it could, the, the, the compression is basically the same output from the model. And then so we can tweak and, and um, get the model to, to utilize these tools in different ways. But so let's talk about tool world here, right? So tool world is teaching AI to use tools by feel, not just by the book. As an abstract, artificial intelligence, particularly large language models or LLMs like those powering ChatGPT and Gemini have become incredibly skilled at conversation. They can write essays, answer questions, and even generate computer code. However, a significant challenge remains, moving them from being brilliant conversationalists to effective doers. Giving an AI a tool, like the ability to check the weather, book a meeting, or search a database is currently a rigid and cumbersome process, akin to handing it a dense technical manual for every task. 
Toolworld introduces a new framework that fundamentally changes how AI interacts with tools. Instead of relying on rigid commands, Toolworld gives each tool a unique semantic feel or identity, allowing the AI to select the right tool based on intuitive understanding rather than keyword matching. This approach makes the process of using tools faster, more accurate, and remarkably more like humans instinctively choose the right tool instrument for a job. Uh, if you've watched enough videos on my channel, I have talked about this a lot, where essentially the data set itself isn't what matters to the models, right? The models create a uh, representation of that data set, and then they create a latent space, and they fill their latent space based off of that representation. This is based off of that exact same concept, just for a toolbox. So uh, it's not the tools that matter, right? So it's not like, again, that data that you're feeding it directly that matters. It's the representations of that data, and then so we're just taking that in up front and then building out that world from the ground up in that latent space and then making sure that the toolbox is the latent space and then so operates fundamentally within the latent space. And then so as is an introduction, the brilliant intern who can't use a, calcula a calendar. Imagine a genius intern who's read every book, can debate philosophy and write flawless reports. But when you ask them to schedule a meeting, they freeze. They don't know what a calendar is or how to find it. This is the state of many AIs today. They know a lot, but they can't do much unless we walk them through every step. Currently, giving AIs access to tools means providing them with a giant list of commands, a massive manual of function names and usage instructions. This makes the process slow, brittle, and heavily dependent on exact wording. Toolworld proposes a paradigm shift. Rather than selecting tools via keyword matching, AIs should intuitively feel which tool to use based on the meaning of a request. Two, the problem a toolbox full of identical handles. Traditional tool interfaces suffer from rigidity, inefficiency, and lack of context. What we need is not just a list of tools, but a semantic space where tools live according to what they do. So the methodology, building the world of tools. Tool world is built using a three-step architecture, giving each tool a unique scent. Each tool is defined with a name and a purpose, an argument structure, which is the input schema, and then sample inputs and outputs, just like you would fine tune it, right? But they're embedded, they're created as embeddings and then injected directly into the latent space. So these are embedded using a language model to produce a vector embedding, which is a high dimensional scent that represents the tool's function. So for example, get weather forecast and schedule meeting both live near each other in the latent space. They deal with time and future planning. Next is the finding the right tool with a GPS of intent. User intent, e.g., for example, what's the weather like in London is embedded into that same latent space. The AI simply finds the closest matching tool vector based on cosine similarity, no manual scanning or keyword matching required. Smart translation from intent to action. Once the tool is selected, a second LLM, in this instance, Gemini 1.5 Flash, extracts the arguments needed by the tool using a prompt-aware form filler. So, for example, what's the weather in London for the next three days becomes the, the, what the, the instructions that the model follows, uh, follows from the tools that it pulls from its toolbox, which is all embedded into its latent space, and then so it outputs it directly like this. So this toolbox is flexible and, tool and intuitive. It works with varied phrasings. So book a meeting, set up a call, or put it on my calendar all point towards the same tool. Like it's not just training it like on word for words or, or like, you know, directly that like word context specifically, which is uh, a known very, very brittle issue with current models around this efficient and scalable it adds tool adding tools is trivial trivial you just define embed and drop it into tool world it's a multi-step planning potential agents can chain tools so they can search summarize and email this moves us closer to ai as a true collaborator and not just a responder 
Tool World represents a new way for AI to interact with the digital environment by embedding tools in latent conceptual space. We bypass brittle instruction lists and move towards semantic intuition. This isn't just tool calling, it's tool selection by feel, like a craftsman reaching inst instinctively for the right instrument. With Tool World, we don't just teach AI to talk, we teach it to do. And then I have, so here's the, the radio representation. Like this is like kind of like the, the front end interface for it at the moment. Uh, and then, uh, here's the, like collab notebook, right? And then so just, I'll just read here. So this Jupyter notebook tool world provides an advanced framework for the LLM. It moves beyond simple function calling. And the core of this project is the two step process of tool selection and argument extraction. I'll let you read through the rest of this here. Uh, it's and then the code here. It's basically just uh, importing. I have you know like a radio it's sentence tra and sentence transformers in order to like get and run that front end. I'm utilizing Google API, a Google API, and then calling Google Gemini 1.5 Flash because it's like free with the API. Uh, and then here's all the code. To, it's like 430 lines of code overall to run. And then you can see here I have all the tool sets defined, right? So like for example, for the weather reporter. The weather reporter provides the weather forecast for a specific location for a given number of days. It's an object, its properties, its location is it's a string description, the city and state, for example, San Francisco, days, type, integer description, the number of days to forecast. It's basically essentially like giving it like this is everything that you need in order to like be a weather uh, weather reporter. Here's a few prompt examples. Uh, like, and then here's exactly like what it looks like to be a weather reporter, right? So this is, if you have to call the weather reporter tool from your toolbox, this is exactly what it is. And then this is represented overall in the model's latent space, uh, via like this here, right? And then this, this, and then within this circle is all of this information gets stored within it, right? Like, so up to here. Uh, and then this is like th this is representative of that blue circle that we're looking at there. And that's kind of just how it works overall. Right. And that's essentially how tool world is set up. And then so it's just a uh, completely different way and approach of doing this. Right. So like you're not fine tuning the model at all on this. Like the first thing that this data goes through is it goes through it like an, like you have an embedding model. Right. And then so it's the embedding model that's getting trained on this. So it's um, the end result, like what Gemini gets is is like the the ex ex abstraction from the embedding model. Right. Like I've talked about like that a lot on my channel. So it's it's kind of that uh, chain and that cycle, uh, overall. And that's kind of how this works. So I'll leave a link to, uh, both the GitHub repository, uh, as well as the collab notebook here. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.